Good morning, eCognition oil palm application users, or good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. This is Keith Peterson. I am the product manager for our Trimble eCognition software products. And today we are going to talk about what is new in eCognition Oil Palm application 1.3. This product just released yesterday, so uh, any of you that uh, currently are under uh, maintenance uh, should have received the information that the product is available for download, and you can start uh, using this. But if you want to learn what's new in, in the product, then this is the perfect opportunity to get a, a jump on things and then early start on how to use the new features that are available. So this is what we will go through in the next, uh, in the next slides. And we will also look at a live demonstration of uh, how this product has changed. Just uh, an overview. We will do an introduction to the eCognition Oil Palm application itself in case there are any new users or uh, people that are interested in this product and have not uh, used it before. Uh, then we will look at what's new in version 1.3, <clears throat> like I said, just released yesterday. And then we'll actually uh, look at working with uh, the Oil Palm application in, in, a, uh, in a live demonstration. Before we, we get too far into the webinar, I just want to mention this webinar is being recorded. So if you uh, have to jump out at some point or you miss uh, uh, something that we discussed, it is going to be available uh, through the Trimble Geospatial Webinar uh, website. You can then access the archive anytime you like and replay it. That being said, if you have a question that comes up during the webinar, please feel free to use that question dialog field to uh, ask your question. And uh, one of our uh, participants here in the office will answer that. And we will also take breaks uh, to answer your questions uh, throughout the webinar. So that's the overview of, of what we will be uh, doing today. And like I said, if you have questions, please uh, chat with us uh, via the question dialogue at any time. So an introduction to the uh, Trimble Oil Palm application. First of all, this is an out of the box solution specifically for the identification and analysis of oil palm trees. It is utilizing our very strong and powerful eCognition technology, but we've put a easy to use graphical user interface around it and created a, a guided and automated workflow for the users to easily step through this analysis. This means that there's a low ramp up time and it requires very little pre-knowledge of e-cognition, of remote sensing, or even of GIS. It's really aimed toward a broad, broad uh, range of users in the oil palm industry, whether it's going to be an operator or a manager of a plantation, or maybe those uh, GIS uh, specialists that are providing services to such plantations. It, it, uh, we address all, all audiences here. Okay, this is a standalone product. It means it will work without any of the other eCognition products, such as eCognition server or eCognition, uh, any uh, parts of the eCognition suite or essentials. So, uh, but of course it can be integrated into our other Trimble platforms. The real benefits of the eCognition oil palm application are that its users get a precise and accurate information of their plantation, an overview of the current state uh, of growth within the plantation. Uh, also, it allows its users to create what we call actionable data out of these uh, UAS data sets uh, for, the, for the plantation. That means they can walk away, they have, uh, for example, the number of palms and various statistics on those palms that they can take and make crucial decisions uh, right, right there. Also, it just makes for faster and better decision making, uh, uh, even on the per tree basis. And this will increase production yields and drive uh, what we hope sustainable plantation operations uh, going into, into the future. What type of outputs are available from uh, the Cognition Oil Palm application? Well, of, of course, we, we do the tree counting, so we find tree positions. This is uh, then, uh, for example, available as a, as a point shape file that contains uh, the tree center points and uh, then all the various 
uh, attributes that are associated with that, that tree based on the input data that the user has, has plugged in. In addition, the user can export tree crowns. This is then a polygon, and it's a representative polygon, uh, so small, medium, large. And this will then also be associated with any of the attributes available for that uh, the, the center, the, the point file. Just another uh, option in terms of exporting a product out of, out of the uh, oil palm application. New in eCognition 1.3, and we'll get into the details uh, a little later, is uh, gaps. So these are, as we can see in, in the screenshot in the lower uh, right-hand corner of the, of the slide here, uh, it's a polygon, and it will represent unplanted areas within in the plantation. And of, with this, we, of course, uh, export attributes such as area so that an operator knows how much land within their plantation is available uh, for planting or may not be utilized to its, its fullest extent. Also, the blocks themselves, so the, these blocks this is how the, the plantations are, are split up into, into different groups. These are available as a polygon shapefile for export, and they can, will contain, say, an overview of, of the different statistics of the attributes that were evaluated above. So we will, of course, have a readout on the number of trees per block, the number of large trees, small trees, uh, trees that are, are maybe uh, stressed within each block. So it will give you a summary of the different uh, pieces here. The Econication Oil Palm uh, solution, it, it bundles the Oil Palm application with other Trimble platforms, like I, I mentioned earlier. Uh, and we combine with uh, complementary Trimble technology uh, uh, to provide a, a geospatial eco ecosystem that can be created to support an informative and repeatable workflow. And the solution is made up of, of a close uh, consultation with uh, plantation managers and growers as uh, so we we went and approached them to see what they needed uh, to really push sustainability uh, and and look at the financial planning aspects of of these plantations so it's, it goes through the collection the processing the modeling and of course then the analysis of the uh, the whole plantation Within the collection, of course, uh, Trimble offers a, a range of hardware uh, products that, that are obviously benefit any plantation operators, giving them uh, more accuracy in the data that they are actually acquiring. This could range from uh, a Trimble R, R9S uh, or uh, even in the past, uh, the Trimble UAVs uh, that were available could go through to a Geo 7X and, and a catalyst system for collecting uh, various data within the field. And of course, going through, uh, through this whole system, we can guarantee uh, that high level of, of accuracy and, uh, and the highest possible product quality that there is. Within the what we call the data processing, uh, there are, are several options going through, say, the TBC base module. So that would be processing that UAV data that you collect, whether it's going to be through a Trimble uh, solution or a third-party solution, or, for example, uh, the UAS master product, which is also available within uh, as a TBC module itself to create those uh, orthorectified uh, images and, of course, elevation products that are, are, are advan an advantage when, when doing the, the analysis. From here, we take those products out of Trimble Business Center or, or UAS Master, and we bring them in into this, this final piece here. This is the, what we call the analysis phase, and this is where the eCognition oil palm application is then utilized, and uh, then we can of course, take our exports from this. So this is just an example of what we call the, the, this, this complete uh, Trimble-based solution. It is available um, and will, of course, have its benefits uh, for, the, for our users. So in the end, uh, when, when we use this solution, it, it's all about creating these, this actionable spatial data. And this uh, comes out of then the Commission Oil Palm application. It flows back to plantation managers or, or the people in that chain of command to make uh, their decisions. For example, 
check a, a certain palm within a certain block because it has been flagged as an anomaly or as a, a stressed tree, whether that tree is too short or not getting enough fertilizer or maybe getting too much water. These are things that uh, then the, the managers can check in the field in a more efficient way, not having to go out and just look at every single tree. They We can uh, provide them with the location-based uh, data to really focus their efforts in, in certain parts of the plantation that, that need the uh, need to be uh, addressed. So what is new in, uh, in oil palm uh, version 1.3? We've been, we've been working over the last year here to, to make improvements to this product. And what we've really uh, focused on is extending our analysis capabilities. So provide, providing more tools uh, within, within oil palm, uh, the oil palm application, but trying also to keep these tools in an easy to use uh, format. So what we've done is we've added this uh, gap detection support, like I mentioned earlier. This allows users to look for areas of the plantation that are not being utilized to their fullest, so looking for areas that are available for additional planting. And we will see the intricacies of this tool in the, in the demonstration in a, in a few moments. We've also improved uh, the deliverable packages uh, in part to reflect the new uh, information that we're creating through the, the gap detection, but also providing uh, better screenshots and more understandable statistics uh, within a, the PDF report, which is also an option for, for exporting beyond uh, the shape files. So you have improved visuals uh, within the, in the reporting packages. And finally, just uh, increasing workflow performance, uh, making improvements to the manual editing tools and, and report generation, as well as making uh, certain bug fixes that, that came up during, of, of course, during the uh, phase of, of Oil Palm application 1.2. These have been fixed and uh, implemented within the version 1.3. So these are the three areas that we really were tackling uh, with version 1.3. That being said, before we move on, um, are there any questions that have popped up while I've presented so far? Mm, hi, Keith. Um, at the moment, everything's pretty quiet here. No questions from the audience. So I think you can go ahead and present. All right, Matthias, thank you. Uh, like I said, again, to anybody who may have just be joining the webinar, it is being recorded. And you can use the questions dialog to ask questions at any time, and we will either uh, give you a, a written answer or we will discuss this in, in the course of the webinar. So let's get back in to our presentation. It's time to dive into the live demonstration of the eCognition Oil Palm application 1.3. So if this is the moment you've been waiting for, we will unveil the new software that is available for download as of yesterday. This is what it looks like. The look and feel has been uh, pretty much maintained any users that are familiar with the package, we'll see a new action group here, the DTEC gaps. Um, this is the, the new functionality that's been added, and we will get to this at, as the time comes. So for those of you that have, have used the Cognition Oil Palm application, um, please bear with us, you, but you may learn a few uh, little tips and tricks from, uh, from our side. Uh, for those of you that are completely new, uh, this is what the eCognition Oil Palm application looks like. It is a out-of-the-box application, so that means it comes with a set of actions, a set of uh, rules that are to be applied via a graphical user interface. Um, so if there are any developer users out there, um, don't be scared. Uh, you don't see a rule set. That's because this has been uh, turned into this graphical user interface to allow uh, a simple and a straightforward use of the product. The first step, of course, is getting our data products into the Cognition Oil Palm application. So uh, you've done your, your flight acquisition with a UAV. You've processed that data in a package like a UAS master or info or the, those modules within TBC. You've created your ortho mosaics. You've created, say, uh, an elevation product. And, and now you're ready to, to bring this data into the eCognition Oil Palm application. So what we do is we simply click on an action. It is highlighted here. Each action has a set of parameters that then become available uh, in the lower portion of this window. So if I click on import data, I see that I have the options to add layer, 
Uh, I can close a project. So the first thing we need to do is actually add our image layer to the eCognition Oil Palm application. That being said, the Oil Palm application supports image layers, so raster formats. Uh, if you have a point cloud, sorry, uh, that is, is not required for this application. Uh, you can certainly bring in elevation data, but it has to be in a rasterized format. So let's click this add layer. I'm going to navigate to uh, my data sets here. I have actually have some here on my desktop. Here's my demonstration folder. I'm going to select my uh, my orthophoto RGB. So here I've got an ortho image. It's uh, say a, uh, a a mosaic, and it's in RGB, red, green, blue. So we will click this and open this. Depending on the size of your image, it may take um, a few moments to uh, load into the viewer. Here it is, and the next step is to then tell the Oil Palm application what um, bands, so this image is of course red, green, and blue, uh, but which of these bands corresponds to the actual red, green, and blue bands? This will depend on the sensor that you are using. Um, and since we opened up the eCognition Oil Palm application to third-party UAV sensors, we need to account for some of the variability and how they actually deliver this data. So this is where the users can then come down into these fields and determine this. So I know uh, from my, my provider that my red is going to be band one, my green is going to be band two, and my blue is then the band three. Those are the defaults here. Of course, if you have a fourth band, say that near infrared, also very uh, good to have in, in eCognition, you can leave that as unassigned. We will still uh, read it. Don't worry, you don't have to define that band here, but we can still utilize that information at a later point uh, within the analysis, which I'll point out when we get there. From there, we also have the option of going into these general settings. So here I can select what area unit do I want for my reporting, and we can uh, select uh, square meters, square kilometers, acres, and hectares, hectares being the default. So I'll leave that, that default value of hectares, but just know as a user, you can change those those units that will eventually be used in, in some of the outputs. Finally, when you have these settings complete, we can just we just click on confirm. And once I do this, I will notice that I have a check mark within this action. That check mark means that means that I have fulfilled the minimum requirements for this particular action, and I can continue on to the next action item in the in the oil palm application workflow. So before we do this, uh, are, have any questions uh, popped up on, on project creation, uh, data input, or, or, or any of these subjects? Uh, not yet, Keith. I think everything is pretty clear, at least for the, for the audience. So I think you can continue with the presentation of the software. OK, we will move on. So the next step here is called load define blocks. Now this uh, comes from our, our close work with uh, oil palm uh, consultants that these uh, plantations are organized into what are called blocks. And the user has the option of if they have their, their blocks uh, established, they can load these or they can use a manual creation. So there are tools to draw the blocks in uh, manually if, if they would like. You can import this from a shape file. So that would mean you'll have to have that in, in a GIS shape file format. Alternatively, you can also just simply use the entire scene if you would like to. So I have in this demonstration data set of my blocks saved as a shape file. So I'm going to click this option. Once I do this, uh, the tools change slightly to allow me to select and browse to this uh, shapefile. So I'm going to, to browse to the location. I see here this is my block.shp. I can simply select this and click Open. Once I do this, uh, I automatically start seeing the extents of my blocks here within the viewer. Um, if you have numerous attribute columns within your shapefile that uh, would define the, a block name, for example, you can select those. Uh, you could also um, 
edit certain block naming. So we have an ID field here that contains the name of our block. And now I'm going to click Save to lock these parameters in to the solution. You will notice once uh, the save is complete, again, I have my check mark here indicating that I can move on to the next step. So the next step is uh, the utilization of elevation data. And here again, the user is presented with uh, several options uh, to address as much flexibility that is possible. So by default, we will allow the analysis to continue without any elevation data, so without a digital surface model or a digital terrain model. Alternatively, we can uh, reference any existing DSM or DTM that we may have created through such a product as, as a, a TBC or a UAS master. Or the third option being, if I've only created my, uh, my DSM in outside of, uh, of, of the oil palm application, I can actually estimate my digital terrain model based on this existing DSM. So in my data set, uh, I have an existing DSM, so I'm going to select this and uh, we can estimate the DTM from this. So if I select that, again, the options change here. I need to select the file that represents my DSM. I haven't loaded this yet. So remember, this is also a raster file, so I'm going to import from a new file here. And I can see here, uh, elevation DSM is the name of the file that I'm going to use. Click OK and this will be loaded into uh, the project. I also then have options, and this impacts the, uh, the digital terrain model estimation on whether I'm working in flat terrain or rough terrain, and the, the degree of, of uh, roughness can be set here. So I know from the outset that this is uh, this plantation is in, a, is in a flat working environment, so I'm going to use this option of flat. And then I will click the Create DTM button. So this is now we are running, we're estimating that DTM uh, generation based on our DSM input. And again, based on the size of your, your mosaic, the size of your working area, this could take uh, long, a longer time to, to run. So while this turns away, Matthias, are there any more questions on, on the line here? Yes, we actually have one question. Um, and that would be if the application is only for UAV data or if you also could use satellite data. Excellent question. Uh, in the outset of the presentation, uh, we looked at, uh, we said this is for UAS data. So the oil palm application uh, is only going to be effective if you have UAV data. Um, remember, we have to be able to see our palms uh, within the data set and uh, the satellite data. Um, although you can get uh, some very high resolution satellite data, at the moment it is not supported in the eCognition Oil Palm application 1.3. So in the meantime, my uh, DTM has finished processing here. I will click OK. I've give, been given the notification that it is complete. Once we create the DTM, and we ha also have the DSM, we then do some uh, band math behind the scenes, and we create an NDSM. So this is a normalized uh, digital surface model. And what this means is we're calculating the height above ground for any object that's elevated. So we're essentially setting ground to zero or just about. And then we can actually have uh, values in and uh, of objects above ground so that I can, I can, would know then the height of a tree once, once I find it. You also have some options to do some editing here. You can manually edit uh, any, the, the ground if certain things didn't uh, work out right. In our case, everything uh, looks very nice. I can see here uh, our, 
these are some higher, much higher trees, probably older trees uh, that are higher than here. We also have some of these uh, smaller trees that have been already planted in between the rows here. So I'm going to save my results. <clears throat> I need to do this in order to, to advance. Again, I see my check mark. This means I can move to the next piece here. And this is the detect and analyze palms action. So here we have a number of tools uh, or parameters available to this. First of all, when we do the, the palm detection, we utilize primarily the, the green band. So we have to define which of our bands it corresponds to green. We did this in the first step, but uh, if you want to base this on another band, you could do so. Our recommendation, the way we've created this product, is to get the best results based on, on green. You then have a sensitivity parameter here. So we can use this slider and increase or decrease sensitivity. Obviously, the, the higher I set this, uh, the more sensitive the, the uh, template is to finding a, a palm tree in the background. Just to let you know, this default value of 0 0.7 was what we found to be an optimal value based on the input of a Trimble UX5 at the time, which was used to develop this software initially. So if you're using another type of UAV, you may need to decrease or increase this value as, as you see fit. Feel free to experiment with this value and play with these sliders when you're, when you're doing the analysis. You really can't uh, break anything uh, within the oil palm application. We also have another option here just below, which is detect based on elevation. This is optional. So if you don't have elevation data available to you, obviously you can skip this piece. If you do have the elevation data available, so if I come up to my toolbar here, right now I'm simply looking at the, or showing the ortho photo. If I come to the end, I can look at this NDSM and I can see that some of these small palms are really uh, best visible in, in my elevation product, this is an indication to me that elevation might be a good setting to, to use here uh, in addition to, the, to the, uh, the sensitivity value, which is based on the, the optical data. So again, if, you, if you're working with in an environment where you have some very small palms like we have uh, down in this, in this field here, feel free to increase the sensitivity uh, of this uh, this elevation field here. I don't know, I'll try something like 0 0.45. Again, you can experiment and you can write over your results. If you're not happy, you can go back and make adjustments here uh, to find the, the parameters that best fit your, your input data. We then move down here. We have uh, the breakdown into now determining palm, uh, the crown size. So we have small, medium, large, and we can adjust the settings to say, well, a small palm is uh, what I consider two, two meters in, in diameter or three. Uh, again, the user can adjust uh, these settings. Uh, these are, are the defaults, and uh, I'm going to leave them as such. The bottom part here is for looking at anomalies or our stressed trees. So for example, these uh, lighter trees here are all, are all indicating uh, a stress. Uh, this is ideally done based on um, certain NDVIs or normalized differential vegetation index uh, thresholds. Uh, that requires the near infrared layer. I do not have this in my particular project. So I am going to then use, excuse me, the call came in on my computer in the meantime. I am going to just set these as not assigned. I am not going to calculate whether a tree is uh, and it has an anomaly or not in this case. So the last step is then to execute this, this action based on the parameters that I have, have defined here. So I'm going to now launch this and detect palms. 
And again, depending on the size of your image, this could take uh, less or more time to run. If you're working in a huge mosaic, oh, one of my recommendations to decrease some of the, the, the processing time is maybe just break that down into more manageable tiles for your particular computer. The, the eCognition Oil Palm app does not have any uh, size restrictions to it. We can handle uh, as, as large an image as, as you want to put into it. The restrictions really come on, on the individual hardware that you are using. And of course, we have uh, no influence over what computer you're going to be running this on. And so if you find yourself with a, with a computer that is running slow, maybe you want to break this into uh, tiles and, and process uh, one tile at a time when doing your analysis. So here, uh, it's already run through. And I see I have my, my tree crown polygons. I have different uh, sizes available. I also have the point file, which is in this. If I zoom in, I can see that cross here dropped nicely right on uh, the center or near center of my palm. <clears throat> If I'm not happy with these results, so I can see oh, I didn't get uh, all the all the um, small palms in this field, I can go back and and change some of my input parameters. So I can hit this revert, this essentially an undo button, go back now and adjust. Maybe I have to increase my threshold a little on this option for using the elevation, and again run the detection of the palms. And we'll let this just run through again. I just really want to stress, please use the, the options here, these sensitivity thresholds, uh, as, as they are required for your data sets. And uh, you, ha you have these tools, and you can adjust them. You're not going to break anything. Um, so you, can, you don't have to just simply accept our default settings. Um, you can use this in the way that best fits your input data. So as this runs, have any other? Yes, Keith, there's one more question. And that would be if the parameters can be set per block. So in case uh, they have several blocks with a different age of planting. No, at the moment, uh, the parameters uh, cannot be set per uh, block. Uh, but one recommendation is to, if you have, if you really want to set individual uh, block parameters, you could use your blocks. Uh, you could uh, split your blocks up into individual shape files, and you could run this uh, individually on on your image. So load in a block A, which would be palms, young palms, and and old palms. Uh, this the 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 settings are not individual per block. But as you can see, um, if I have a block here that has young palms uh, and, and blocks here that have sort of, let's say, a, a medium age palm in this particular scenario, and we have blocks here, you know, if you looked at the, that elevation data, I'll switch this on again, uh, we see that these blocks contain some of the oldest palms here, just based on, on the simply on tree height. Um, but even if we use the, the overall uh, parameters, we're still getting a very good detection. Of, of these palms here, as well as some of the, these younger palms planted in between. Uh, where it, is, it becomes a little more tricky is, is some of the extremely young palms, because as, as you see here, if I zoom in, even in the elevation view, uh, we're, we're not picking up uh, a huge difference in elevation. And that's one of the criteria for finding these, these very, very small palms at the moment. But again, you have the options to increase this uh, sensitivity threshold, so uh, you you can use this and, and go beyond just uh, the parameters for uh, individual blocks. So at the moment, I'm I'm now happy with these uh, results. I'm going to save. Now I also saw in in here that there are a few errors, um, probably caused by uh, increasing that uh, sensitivity threshold and elevation. We also pick up some other um, objects that could be elevated. But this is where we have tools to do editing. And we can come in and make uh, some manual corrections 
to the results. Very simple. We can add, remove blah, uh, palms. We can edit the size. We can edit uh, the the anomaly. So here, for example, something triggered a palm in, in that roadway. Here also there might be some, some uh, brush in this particular uh, field. Here we can come in and, and quickly go through and edit some of, of these palms. So we also have a few missing here, obviously, but this uh, this is actually good. It will give us a chance to demonstrate uh, the gaps. We can just make believe that the, some of these palms uh, are actually not there. But to show you here, I can add a palm and we can then come in, edit that size parameter simply by clicking on it and get it back to the, the very small size. So here too, maybe that should be really uh, a small palm, and you can see that the user can very quickly come through and and make adjustments to the results here. So again, something uh, maybe we don't want there, and over here this looks uh, very good at the moment, but here, for example, one was missed here as well, and maybe this is also a matter of in just playing around with my individual sensitivity uh, parameters here, but we'll make these edits. Uh, if you get to the point where you are happy, we can then uh, save these results. That's uh, that's critical. We use this to make sure you save your editing results, uh, or you won't be able to advance because you don't get the the check mark here. Even if you don't do any editing, you'll just have to save by default, and that locks in uh, the overall results and allows you to move to the next action. So this is where we get into the new feature that's available in Oil Palm version 1.3. This is the detect gaps action. And again, uh, we give the user options. Maybe uh, you're not interested in finding any gap areas in your plantation, so you can just continue without doing this particular calculation. Alternatively, we can, of course, calculate the gaps. And here we have certain uh, parameters that we need to fill out as a user, and these can be, first of all, the planting distance. I can use this slider to change my uh, planting distance and um, to whatever is maybe established within this plantation. So I'm gonna use this value of nine. I can also use a set of parameters of minimum gap area. I may not be interested in the very small gaps, for example. So I can set this uh, to, to a certain uh, level, uh, it's again, in hectares, so if I set my, my gap to the minimum gap area of uh, say 2.5 hectares, I'm not going to uh, include any gaps smaller than 2.5 hectares in this output. We can then execute this, and as it runs, we will also See here, I found some gaps. Like I said, in reality, there are some small palms planted here, but for the sake of the demonstration, we'll, we'll pretend that this this uh, land is available. So obviously, if, if palms have been detected here, we wouldn't have, have calculated this gap area. And we can come in and, and find this. I can also visualize this based on a density map. So this may also be an interesting setting to use. So if this density a layer in the background, obviously the uh, redder this is, the, the higher the density is of, of trees in this area. So I can see that this corresponds well with some of the results in that, in that density map, areas that uh, do not contain any, any palms. This particular area up here is blue because it was not included in the analysis at all as it was not in a block. So we can toggle that, that view on and off here. You also have tools for editing these blocks. So uh, make sure you, uh, when, uh, it also gives me a good opportunity to uh, point out this description field. If I'm hovering over a particular tool, I'm not sure what this tool does. You can read in the description field of how this tool works, or of course you can go into the user guide uh, to get a, an explanation, a more detailed explanation. So if I want to edit blocks, you you can do this. Uh, what, what it means, if I click this, I'm now entering editing mode. So I can see that this polygon has, has, has shipped. I see the outline as well as its nodes. And I can come in 
and right click on a node. I can say delete node um, here, or I can come in and uh, move these around if, if I need to. And I might need to come in and, and adjust this to account for this water area that is uh, maybe simply just unplantable. And I can come in and make the adjustments as, as I need to. But it is possible to adjust these uh, polygons here. If you do any adjustments, of course, make sure you, you, you click Save. So if we then save our results, these will be locked in. I should mention uh, when, when we do the gap area calculation, we are simply looking uh, at a tree density and where, uh, where there are no trees. We are not considering whether uh, it, this is uh, any type of land cover here. So if, if, say, a road is going through or if there is uh, a waterway here. So example here, it looks like we have uh, some type of a canal or river system running through the plantation. This is currently not included as, a, as an area to exclude from, from the gap analysis as our areas of a certain slope. This is something we will continue to look at for, for the next generation of gap detection tool and, and, and future versions of eCognition oil pump. But what we do provide is, is a useful indication of where there is available land for planting within the plantation to give those managers that information of where they can better utilize uh, space within their within their blocks. So once I save those results, I get that check mark and I can come to the, the final part of the workflow and that is now the export piece. So we want, of course want to get this great information out of the eCognition Oil Palm app and we can export various products. So we could export the tree centers, we could export tree crowns or the blocks. You don't always have to have them all. You can select whatever uh, files you'd like. These get exported as shape files. And remember, uh, if we have shape files, of course, we can look at attributes for those shape files, so we can open up to see what attributes are there. We can use the show hide attribute table. And you see, for example, if I'm looking at the trees layer here, that I have a, a large number of, of attributes available. And this ranges from uh, just a, a certain block number. So all these trees that are available here are in, in block, the block ID 100 that we, we took from our input shape file. It's asked, it, we indicate whether that tree is an, an anomaly or, or, or is it in a stress condition. Remember, I didn't choose to run this analysis because I don't have that near infrared. So in this case, they're all going to be set to no. And then we, we also get an indication of its crown size. So if whether it's small, medium, or large. And we also get the, the density and then the actual physical position of this tree, that those x, y coordinates. Um, in addition, you have an elevation value, so that's that just the strict elevation of, of this uh, location. And if you uh, used any elevation data within your analysis, uh, we can also calculate uh, the height of that tree. So we, we calculate that NDSM layer. From that, we can derive the, the height of an individual tree. And finally, uh, at the end of this uh, dialogue, there is this a comment field, and this uh, is indicating the method uh, that was used to detect a, a certain tree. So you notice too, when I when I click on a tree, the viewer will jump to that tree uh, within within the center of the viewer. Um, and you'll see here, this uh, is his approach. Let's see if we can increase our our side here, the size here. That uh, the approach is. Uh, Tell you, this has been used with template matching. Um, those smaller trees uh, will probably be use an approach called uh, a, a height difference. And if a tree was added manually, there will be that uh, indication within the comment field that this tree was a, a manual uh, correction. So you can quickly determine um, say the, the overall accuracy of, of this tool. And these statistics, by the way, they, of course, are exported with that shape file. They are also summarized within the report. So I can pull up my block statistics. I can see then the pure, just the pure number of, of palms per block. I can get the number of palms uh, per hectare. I also have then a breakdown by 
by the crown size per block and whether it's anomaly or, or not remember we didn't uh, we didn't run this and then you also have the, the amount of gap area uh, being a new feature per block so that we only had a gap in this one particular block and that gap is uh, approximately uh, 0.28 hectares in size so this is the information that would be then exported with that shape file alternatively you have the option of exporting a report this report will be in PDF format so you could also select this and this report will provide a, a summary of the different statistics on, on block levels and, and total levels and provide valuable uh, visual aids on, on where certain uh, aspects of the plantation were found. So you will get an overview uh, visualization of each block as well as then the breakdown of trees and, and et cetera found in, in each block. And then all you have to do is then click the export button. This will be put out and you can then open these shape files in the GIS. Uh, you can open the PDF in, in whatever reader you have. And most importantly with, with those shape files, we get an indication that this, this was uh, created. And with the shape files, you also have that DBF uh, file, which stores those attributes. If you want to, open that up in the uh, uh, Microsoft Excel. You can certainly do that, and then you can start to do a lot of uh, analysis of those individual statistics within, within Excel and get the breakdown of each tree within your plantation. You can start to organize and, and do whatever you want in, in these types of statistical analysis software packages. So you have a lot of options on how you work with the, the information coming out of, of the Oil Palm application. So uh, that is bringing us to, uh, close to the end of the webinar. Uh, I'd like to now open it up to any, any questions that have come in uh, during, during this presentation. So, Matthias. Yes, Keith. Uh, so we have one more question. I'm not 100% sure if I get it, but uh, the question is, can we manually remove the water or road area from the detect gap process, meaning the gap blocks could be split into few blocks per detection. So if you want to remove, uh, the, like I said, the, the, the current gap uh, detection does not automatically um, filter out whether uh, the, the surface is a road or water, you can remove those from the gap by using the manual editing tools for the gap. You can, uh, you can alter those, the nodes to remove, say, an area uh, such as such as this, so that it's not all considered gap. Those you, that you can do with the manual editing tools within the gap detection. Yes. Uh, and there are actually no further questions at the moment. So, if there are no further questions here, then uh, jump back into the. Uh, presentation and just throw up the last slide and this is actually just to thank you for your time uh, remember again the webinar has been recorded so if uh, you missed a piece of it then please you'll be able to find this recording available after the webinar has been completed um, within the Trimble geospatial uh, webinar uh, web page and uh, you may take one or two days to get this uploaded, but uh, it will be available there. And if you have any questions that were not answered here during the webinar, please feel free to contact us. The best address to, for this is to contact uh, our support team, and you can write them simply an email at support at ecognition.com, and we will be happy to discuss any of your, or your questions with you. And finally, eCognition 1.3 is available now, and if you are one of our customers uh, currently under maintenance, you would have been notified about this yesterday. You can download and install this product, and uh, I hope you enjoy the new gap detection features as well as uh, the new uh, improvements to the reporting and, of course, uh, the bug fixes that we have included. And for that, I will then sign off. Thank you very much for attending, and again, uh, 
please let us know if you have any questions.